Do you like the contrast between the big picture and the hands-on applicable part? The never-ending polarity between the left hemisphere, which sees the trees, but not the forest, not the big picture, and the right hemisphere, which sees the forest, the context, the big picture, but not the individual trees. I often wobble on this spectrum. Perhaps you can reconcile them both and make peace with them, but I believe most of us can't, unless we escape our brain. In this video, we'll be looking at five paintings and I'm interested to know which painting do you think represents our current state of civilization? Hi, I am Jan from sustainablebutterflies.com.au. We are on a mission to make Australian educational, care and other organizations sustainable, frugal and improve their footprint. The link to our website is in the description below. The artworks we are looking at today were created by English-born American painter Thomas Cole. His iconic artwork is the five-part series and it's called The Course of Empire. It depicts the same landscape over generations, but at the same time during one day, from dawn to dusk. From its natural state to consummation of empire and, and then its decline and desolation. But hang on a sec, you might be asking, why do some paintings have any relevance to sustainability? And fair enough, that's a good question. It's because artists are often the first people who understand the big picture. So here we go. And the first painting, The Savage State, shows the valley from the shore opposite the cliff, in the dim light of a dawning stormy day. A hunter wrapped in skins runs through the wilderness, pursuing a deer. Canoes paddle up the river. On the far shore can be seen a clearing cluster of wigwams around the fire, the center of the future city. The painting reflects native American life. In the second painting, the pastoral state, the sky has cleared and we are in the fresh morning of a day in spring or early summer. The viewpoint has shifted further down the river, as the cliff with the boulder is now on the left-hand side of the painting and another peak can be seen in the distance beyond it. Much of the wilderness has given way to settled lands, with fields and lawns visible. Various activities go on in the background. Plowing, boat building, herding sheep, dancing. In the foreground, an old man sketches what may be a geometrical problem with a stick. On a cliff on the near side of the river, a megalithic temple has been built and smoke, presumably from sacrifices, arises from it. The painting reflects an idealized pre-urban ancient Greece. The third painting, The Consummation of Empire, shifts the viewpoint to the opposite shore, approximately the site of the clearing in the first painting. It is midday of a nice summer day. Both sides of the river valley are now, are now covered in colonnaded marble structures, whose steps run down into the water. The megalithic temple seems to have been transformed into a huge domed structure dominating the riverbank. The river mouth is guarded by two old lighthouses and ships go out to the sea beyond. A joyous crowd throngs the balconies and terraces as a scarlet robe king or victorious general, victorious general crosses a bridge co uh, connecting the two sides of the river in a triumphal procession. In the foreground, an, an elaborate fountain gushes. The painting suggests the height of ancient Rome. The fourth painting, The Destruction of Empire, has almost the same point of view as the third, Though the artist has stepped back a bit to allow a wider scene of the, of the action and moved almost to the center of the river. The action is, of course, the destruction of the city in the course of a storm seen in the distance. It seems that a fleet of enemy warriors has overthrown the city's defenses, sailed up the river and it's pillaging the city and killing its inhabit inhabitants. The bridge across which which the triumphal procession has crossed is broken. A makeshift crossing st strains under the weight of soldiers and refugees. Columns are broken, fire breaks from the open floors of a palace on the riverbank. In the foreground, a statue of some hero stands headless, still striding forward into the uncertain, f uncertain future, reminiscent of the hunter in the first painting. This painting suggests the Vandal pillage of Rome in the 455 after death. And the final fifth painting, Desolation, shows the results year, years later. We view the remains of the city in the light of a dying day. 
the landscape has begun to return to wilderness and no human beings are to be seen, but the remnants of their architecture emerge from beneath a, co a cover of trees and overgrowth. The broken stumps of the lighthouses loom in the background. The arches of the shattered bridge and the columns of the temple are still visible. A single column looms in the foreground, now a nesting place for birds. The sunrise of the first painting is mirrored here by a moonrise, a pale light reflecting in the ru ruin-choked river, while the standing pillar reflects on the last rays of sunset. Wow, what a journey, what a day! I wonder, do you like any of these paintings? For me, I like them, they're beautiful and I love what they convey. However, as far as analogies go, I find these analogies relatively simp simplistic nowadays. And the reason for that is, these ancient and insular cultures, civilizations, for example, the Greek, the Roman, Aztec, Mayan or Egyptian, are all gone. So we are all globalized. Where I see some disturbing relevance though, is in the third painting, the consummation of empire. Because this model has been flagged as the model upon which we all depend. We are told that we need to consume, grow, expand and build more. And maybe if we replace the word consume and grow for evolve, because this is the part of evolution after all, after all anyway, maybe we could then reframe that picture. All right, but enough of that preaching. If you like his work, check out his Voyage of Life, which is something similar but about human life. We are sustainable butterflies and who are we doing this for? For the environment, future generations, plants, animals, including butterflies. You have a great day.